Today's Goodyear 400 at Darlington was won by William Byron, but just looking at the results doesn't tell the whole story. Martin Truex dominated the early stages. Ross Chastain and Kyle Larson dominated the later stages, but with 20 laps to go, Ryan Newman spun, which flipped the race on its head. A big one and a Ross Chastain, Kyle Larson wreck later, and William Byron pulls away from Kevin Harvick to win his third race of the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series season. Oh, did I mention Ross Chastain? We're going to recap it all, coming up next on The Spotter Stand. Hello everybody and welcome to the NASCAR Post Race Show for today's Goodyear 400 at Darlington. Um, this race seemed not mundane, but pretty normal, pretty tame. Uh, good race, solid you know, amount of passing and everything, uh, with about 20 laps to go. Uh, you had Kyle Larson in the lead. Um, I believe, I can't actually remember who was second. Um, because it seems like forever ago now because so much has happened after that. Um, but Kyle Larson's in the lead. He had done a, a great short pit, actually, to get ahead of Byron, get ahead of Chastain, get ahead of the guys that he was racing. Um, and then Ryan Newman spun, brought out the caution, and of course, as it usually does in NASCAR Cup Series races nowadays, all heck broke loose, and William Byron avenges his loss from a year ago. Uh, you had... The second big win of the day, uh, this one actually had cars that were in contention. The first one was just a lot of lap cars. Um, but you had Truex and Almarola and a few other guys get involved. And then you have Ross Chastain, who was mad at Kyle Larson for um, not giving him much room on the previous restart when Larson was on the bottom and Chastain was on the top. Um, on this restart, with six laps to go, Chastain's on the bottom and Larson's on the top. So they go into one, Chastain, I mean, you're trying to get all you can on that restart, trying to win the race, obviously. You can't fault a guy for doing that. Um, but he gets up a little bit too high and gets turned into the wall. And we probably have a new rivalry because Kyle Larson, unlike last week when Denny Hamlin put him on the wall in the final lap, was none too kind to Ross Chastain. He called him a hack and many other things I cannot say for sake of this YouTube channel still being uh, up tomorrow. Um, but he was not very happy with Ross Chastain. I don't think he should have been. Um, it was just kind of a racing deal, and Kyle Larson, I think, does have a right to be mad. Um, so then the final restart, it was Larson, uh, sorry, Harvick versus Byron. Harvick had a little bit of damage on his car from earlier. Byron pretty easily uh, pulled away on the green-white checkered and got the win. Sixth race of the season to go to overtime, and it was not a race at all that uh, we expected to go to overtime. Emily, I know you didn't really get to watch any of it, but uh, from my, from from that summary, I guess, uh, what, what can you say about the race? William Byron gets his third win of the season. Well, it sounds like overall I didn't miss a whole lot, but I, I do love to see some drama, so. <laughs> there was plenty of that. I'm a little bummed about that. And, you know, I'm in the Ralph Larson Chastain thing, but It'd be hard not to be on Larson's side of that. Mm -hmm. um, I love me some Larson. I think he's a good guy. And I think he's going to get himself in some trouble. A little so, bit. That's kind of my thought. So. Yeah, nobody's going to... Another, uh... another round of that. Day. Yep, nobody's going to give Ross Chastain the benefit of the doubt. He has not earned the benefit of the doubt. Um, and again, it's not like he did something egregiously wrong. Um, but... It feels like he kind of got upset at Larson the restart before when Larson didn't give him much room and it, I mean he really has no room to do that that's a little hypocritical not that NASCAR drivers are ever hypocritical in any way ever um, but didn't really work out for either of them and Kyle Larson's checkers or record season continues how many races this year could Kyle Larson could legitimately have five to six wins this year maybe more um, in in 13 races this year, he has two wins, five top tens, and all those are top fives. And in every single race where he has not finished in the top five this season, something has gone wrong that has not been his fault. Um, and that was the case again today. It looks like he's going to sail off into the sunset, just like it did at Las Vegas, just like it did at Phoenix, and it did not happen that way. So that that's five races this year that he could have won. You look at the Daytona 500, Atlanta, Talladega, again, just stuff happening, and 
yeah, who knows what Kyle Larson could have been able to accomplish this year. Um, but you picked him, Emily, as, as of course we lose internet connection with Emily. Um, but Emily did pick him to win this race, and it looked for a while like she was looking a genius. I did not look like a genius with my pick at all today. I picked Denny Hamlin. That did not uh, come anywhere close to panning out, as we should be able to get her back. Let's see. Let's hope we can get Emily back. Um, there we go. Sorry, I lost you. Um, apologies. Um, yeah, I can hear you. You're, you're all good. Um, but it's interesting. The back part of this race, and I, I know a Chevy ended up winning it, but the, the front and the back part of this race were drastically different. Um, stage 1 and Stage 2 didn't have a ton of just wow moments. Um, stage 1 was thoroughly dominated by Martin Truex. You had Suarez getting a penalty. Larson and Bubba had bad stops that really set them back. Bubba clawed back up to fifth. Larson obviously in contention for the win before the wreck late. Suarez never really got back uh, anywhere close to the front, but Truex dominated stage one, and he dominated about the first two-thirds of stage two until Ross Chastain came in late, takes the lead away from him, and then it's Chastain versus Truex going into turns three and four on the final lap of the stage with lap traffic all around him. Truex dives into turns three and four, gets under Chastain. Chastain, in very similar fashion to yesterday's Xfinity Series finish, uh, bounces off the wall, and Truex goes for a spin. Now, that, that, that didn't end his competitive day. He was in the top five late when he was involved in the big one. Um, but Martin Truex uh, looked very good for a large portion of this race until he spun, set him back. And then Kyle Larson gets the lead late in stage three, and he kind of runs away with it after the big one involving all the lap cars. So um, it was Toyota domination in the first half, Chevy domination in the second half, chaos, and then ultimately William Byron came through to win. And these are the moments that I think William Byron does need to, to come through in if we want to take him seriously. As a championship contender, I still think Larson has to be the championship favorite because his luck can't be this rotten forever at some point. Good stuff is going to happen to him late in races, and he won't be getting wrecked out or have an unfortunate caution. Uh, but Byron is probably in there as like the number two guy, uh, in my opinion, uh, to be a championship favorite. But his third win of the year, Emily, this is the most he has ever won in a season. Um, what do you think this says about him? That he's he's con he's being consistent too. This is four, I think, top sevens in a row, and that's something we've been worried about with him. Yeah, he can win, but how consistent can he be? Because that still matters sometimes, but. Third one of the year for him. How big do you think this is for William Byron? I guess she didn't hear that. Um, oh, sorry. I'm here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was, sorry, I got my mic off for some background noise. But, um, yeah, so I think it sounds like he really needed this win. And um, good for him. So... Big win for him, and I believe that puts him to the top of the playoff standings. Maybe not quite there, but um, he's on a hot streak, and he gets win number three on the year. He's the only driver this year to have won three races, so we have nine winners through 13 races, and we are halfway already, if you can believe it, through the NASCAR Cup Series regular season. Um, before we look at the results and the point standings for this race, uh, I do want to go through and highlight a few uh, days. Actually, we can just go ahead and look at the results, and I'll, I'll tell you about the days that they had uh, while we're doing that. So William Byron... Had a really fast car all day long. Uh, was in the top five for most of this race. Ends up getting the win on the late restart. Harvick didn't present much of a challenge, but kudos to Kevin Harvick for really being the only SHR car with any pulse today. Ryan Priest, um, I think he was involved in the wreck late. Let me actually see where he finished. Uh, he had a better day than 15th, not bad, but... Uh, he was like 26th at one point. Chase Briscoe had a horrific day, was lapped in stage one and running 31st. He was being passed by a Rick Ware racing car on speed with nothing wrong. Eric Amarola hovered around the top 15 for most of the day. Um, but Kevin Harvick, again, great run for him. It'd be really cool to see him win this year. And I really thought this might be a place where he could do it. But look out for him in the Southern 500. Chase Elliott in third, his best finish since coming back from the leg injury. This was race five. Remember, race five was the magic number where Kyle Busch won uh, his first race back in 2015. So that's what got his rally started. Not quite a win for Chase Elliott, whose dad's uh, Bill was in the booth for stage three of this race. Um, but a, uh, a, a great building block in next points race that we go to, the Coke 600. 
um, is he's won there before uh, at Charlotte. Hasn't yet uh, won a Coke 600, but that'd be a crown jewel to add to his collection. Really good run for him. Kozlowski in fourth, another solid day. How about Bubba in fifth? I thought his day was over after that uh, the slow stop in stage one because Suarez up to that point hadn't been able to do anything. Um, but they ran long on the green flag, uh, during green flag pit stops, and they'd hover around 15th to 16th, and then to end of stage three, they gradually made their way up. They were the benefactor of some of those late cautions, and Bubba Wallace has, uh, only his fourth top ten this year. But the important stat to note is that four, uh, of those four top tens, three of them are top fives. So he's not just finishing ninth or tenth. Um, he is, he was fourth at Kansas, he was fourth at Las Vegas earlier in the season, but now two straight top fives for Bubba Wallace. Um, streak of tracks really good for him, and Charlotte is another, uh, they had a lot of speed there last year, they wrecked out late in that race, um, but that's another big chance for him. Um, let's see here, Harrison Burton in sixth, he's become a meme, his weekly spin, weekly Harrison Burton caution, but today he finally had a solid run. This wasn't a fluke based on crashes. He was running the top 20, top 15, top 10 all day long, ends up with his first top 10 of the year, and I believe only like the third one of his career, so it's a building block. It doesn't mean he's the next coming of David Pearson, but it is something to build on. Kyle Busch in seventh, looked like he'd ha he could have a chance to win this race late and then got bunched up late, as did Chris Trebell. I believe he had a loose wheel. Haley in eighth just finds ways in the Darlington Spring Race to finish well somehow. Ryan Blaney, solid day in ninth. Chris Busher, another solid day in tenth. Todd Gilland in eleventh, continues his strong r er, uh, sophomore campaign. Denny Hamlin in twelfth, family, and I know you didn't really get to watch this race, get to see his day. His day was pretty boring, I'll say that much. Uh, didn't really do much. Qualified like in the mid-teens. Um, stayed around 20th to 15th all day long. Ends up 12th late. Uh, what do you think about the result for him? I, I picked him to win. I thought this could be a really strong streak. Still not a bad day, a solid day. But not what you were I, I, not what you were looking for entirely from, from Denny, especially coming off a win. Yeah, not not the results I wanted for sure. And while I didn't see how he raced, um, I, I was hoping for better, for sure. Yeah, I don't blame you. A little disappointing for sure. Um, solid day, but just not 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 great coming off of when Ricky Stenhouse rebounds to 13th. He was running so well, and it was so upsetting to see him have a flat tire, but ends up 13th. He was running in the top 10 all day. Uh, Christopher Bell in 14th. He was running second. I thought it might be him versus Larson before Larson drove away on the last long green flag run, but loose wheel late. Priest, a decent day. Ty Gibbs, a decent day. All said and done for your first, well, second cup start at Darlington. Chase, oh, wow, okay. Briscoe actually ended up 17th. He was running 31st at one point. I have no clue how he finished 17th, but okay. Joey Logano in 18th. Uh, played some strategy. Was in the top five on that last green flag run. I guess was caught up in the wreck. <laughs> Um, Austin Sindrick had another day where he did absolutely nothing. He ends up in 19th. Kyle Larson in 20th, wrecked out late. Uh, Amarola 21st, Reddick 22nd. Reddick was solid today and ends up with a bad result. Almondinger 23rd, Corey LaJoy 24th. This is only the second or third time this year we have seen that team show up with no speed, and you can't really fault him for it. 24th is the kind of result we expect for that team. They're still having a great year. Eric Jones, 25th, was flying early, and then uh, his wheel was flying in Stage 2, and it caused the first big one of the day. Noah Gregson in 26th, Ty Dillon, 27th, Ryan Newman, 28th, solid day for the Rocket Man, who, um, this was interesting, Emily, this was the best qualifying effort ever in the NASCAR Cup Series for a Rick Ware car. Finishes 28th, but he qualified 26th, so it's fitting that, I know he didn't win the pole, nowhere close to it, but, uh, the Rocket Man ends up, uh, giving Rick Ware their best qualifying effort ever. Ross Chastain, 29th. Josh Berry looked like a substitute today in 30th. Uh, and if Bowman's not able to run the All-Star race, then Berry will have to race his way in through the All-Star Open. You have Martin Truex in 31st involved in a wreck. BJ McLeod, who had a bunch of uh, podcasters and YouTubers, NASCAR content creators on his car today. Really cool to see them had that opportunity to sponsor that thing. McDowell, 33rd. Suarez, 34th. Austin Dillon and both of them involved in that wreck. And then Brennan Poole bows out last with transmission issues. Now, before we talk about the point standings um, going into Charlotte or, or after this race, um, 
I do want to touch on, well, I guess not touch on, but I do want to talk a little bit more in depth about the, the, uh, Larson Chastain wreck. Um, I don't know what has to happen for Ross Chastain to stop Chastaining people. Now, was it his fault that Truex spun earlier in the race? No. Was this entirely on him? No, but he didn't really do himself any favors running Larson in the fence. Um, and I get he's running well, I get he's the points leader, but at some point you're going to have to win a race again for people to really take you seriously and not just see you as a wrecking ball. As good as he's been this year and last year, winning races is what pays nowadays. Um, had such a fast car today, really good looking Dale Jarrett throwback scheme, and he just kind of threw it away. I mean, had a chance for a fantastic race today. Fantastic result. Had a chance to get his first one of the year and prove a lot of doubters wrong. Um, and not everything that he's involved in is his fault. Not everything that he's close to is his fault. But at some point, somebody has to do something. Somebody has to uh, throw a good punch or actually have be given the chance to land a punch. Um, it's just kind of frustrating to see him keep getting away with stuff. But he drove a solid race today. Um, I thought the main story... Uh, before that Newman spin set everything off would be that Kyle Larson had a great strategy call um, and ended up getting around Chastain and Byron for the win late, but no. Uh, what are your thoughts on Ross Chastain? Now, I know you didn't get to see the incident, but he is involved in a, yet another tangle. It's another tangle with Kyle Larson. Um, what do you think about Chastain? Does he need to change anything? What, what would you have him change? Or, or do you like the way he's driving? And just, what do you think of his year? It's been very tumultuous, even though he's the points leader. No, I mean, I think you've got to look at how you're respecting other people and, you know, remembering that if you can race aggressively without being mean um, or doing unnecessary things, and then with how you handle when you mess up, that, that shows a lot, you know. All of these guys have messed up, but you got to handle it right. So that's kind of my thoughts for him. Yeah, and it, it's not that he's like going after the guys that he wrecks with fist fights or anything. It's that he's saying stuff. And again, I know NASCAR drivers are never ever hypocritical, um, but the fact that he says, "Oh, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change," and then he absolutely, and, and then he does absolutely nothing. It's just kind of disappointing. Now, we need this character. I'd be sad if Ross Chastain changed the way he was. We need that aggressive villain bad guy to come in and have an arc in the NASCAR Cup Series. We absolutely need that. I'm not saying Ross Chastain needs to change his driving style entirely, but what I am saying is that he would get the benefit of the doubt. He would get a lot more respect from his competitors if he didn't run somebody in the wall every week or didn't have at least a small hand in an incident every single week. Because it is every single week at this point, or almost every single week. Um, he is the talk of the town, even on a day where he doesn't win, you know. He's always the talk of the NASCAR Cup Series garage, its fans, its competitor, his fellow competitors, crew chiefs, everybody. He's the talk of the industry right now. Um, and we're going to a short track next, going to North Wilkesboro for the All-Star Race. We'll see if Chastain... Uh, a lot of people said he evokes that kind of, that Dale Earnhardt, that, you know, uh, take no prisoners approach to how the guys raced back in the day. And it's going to be pretty back in the day style of North Wilkesboro next weekend. So um, it'll be interesting to see uh, what Chastain's approach is uh, to the All-Star race. Okay, um, last thing before we get to the standings, I just want to talk a little, really quickly here about the... Uh, Truex Chastain incident, another incident with Ross Chastain. Um, but going in three and four, last lap stage two, Chastain is high. Um, and Sorry, I didn't mean to click. I raised my hand. <laughs> oh, did you? I don't know how to. I, was say shocking. I know, right? Incredibly shocking. Like shocking. What is it? What is it? What is yeah, Chastain never does anything. Um, but he's high. Truex is low. He just kind of bounces off the wall. Truex spins. Doesn't really, again, a racing deal. Um, but I guess now we can look at these standings, and for the first time, aside from very early in the season, Emily, and I'm very happy about this, for the first time in his NASCAR Cup Series career, again, aside from early in the year, Bubba Wallace is in the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. So I know NASCAR's official grid with Bowman being out, uh, and Bowman is officially out now by five points. 
um, and and this ESPN graphic, which is sometimes correct, sometimes not, isn't like the thing to go off of. But Bubba is in right now. He is plus 23 over Bowman. He is 18 ahead of Briscoe. So great day for Bubba, and he's in the playoffs right now. Just keep building. Uh, Chastain still the regular season leader by 27 over Chris Trebell. Um He is plus 159. Uh, but playoff-wise, it's Byron, Larson, Bush. They've all won multiple races. Bell, Hamlin, Truex, Reddick, Logano, Stenhouse. So nine winners through 13 races. Chastain plus one, uh, 159. You have Harvick, who is plus 130. Blaney plus 111. Uh, Keselowski plus, and this is to Bowman, by the way, not to Suarez or Briscoe. Um, Harvick, yeah, oh wait, no, Blaney plus 111, Keselowski plus 95, Busher plus 69, Bubba plus 23, uh, and on down the line there. So Suarez, Gibbs, uh, Cindric, um, McDowell, LaJoy, Haley, and all the rest of them there. I would say, if, if you're more than 50 back now, you probably need to start thinking about winning a race. And with that, I believe we have reached the end of our uh, show. So thank you for coming on, Emily. It was a really fun throwback weekend for NASCAR. Uh, three races this weekend. And next, we also kind of have a throwback deal going on. Going to North Wilkesboro for the NASCAR All-Star Race. Trucks will be there on Saturday. We'll have coverage all week here on the spotter stand. And no stat tracking because, you know, we haven't met in North Wilkesboro in 27 years. There aren't really any races to look back on with any relevant information. So... Uh, coverage from North Wilkesboro, ugh, can't talk, North Wilkesboro all week. Um, maybe do like a special preview show. I have a little trailer coming out for it and then the uh, the pre-race shows. Um, then also a podcast tomorrow to recap the Goodyear 400 at Darlington. Here on YouTube and on all major podcast platforms, we'll have a Wednesday podcast recapping and previewing and going over the news. And then a Friday podcast previewing the 2023 NASCAR All-Star Race. So look for us. Um, as it pertains to this video, like, subscribe, comment, share. Um, you can also email us at belowthealmpodcast at gmail.com. So, Emily, thank you for coming on. That is all, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the Goodyear 400. Congratulations to William Byron and um, Kyle Larson and Ross Chastain. Could be a new budding rivalry. We will see you next or this coming week for coverage for North Wilkesboro. Going to the All-Star Race. Next points race, the Coke 600 Memorial Day weekend. We will see you all next time. Goodbye.